everyone, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to take you through the anatomy of the spinal cord and its pathways. We'll learn every bit of this topic by solving questions so that you'll be able to answer it easily the next time you're tested on it. I'm going to tell you the basic parts first and then we'll get through the more challenging ones together. This is the brain and this is the spinal cord. A cross section of the spinal cord will look something like this. This is the grey matter which contains the cell body of neurons. The white matter is on the periphery and it consists of the axons of neurons. This is the ventral median fissure and this is the dorsal median sulcus. The cerebrospinal fluid passes through the central canal. Now let's move to the more challenging part. This diagram is the reference for us and our questions are going to be based on this. Question number one. Which part receives the sense of vibration and proprioception from the lower parts of the body? The correct answer is A. The part responsible for proprioception, pressure, fine touch and vibration is the dorsal column. It is also known as the posterior column. The entire thing is the dorsal column. It has two parts, fasciculus gracilis and fasciculus cuneatus. Gracilis is responsible for the lower parts of the body, while cuneatus is responsible for the upper parts. I remember this by thinking that gracilis is closer to the ground. And if you imagine a person standing, their feet are towards the middle and hands towards the outside. And that's exactly how the dorsal column's distribution is. Gracilis is present medially and cuneatus is lateral. When you feel vibrations in your right lower extremity, there are neurons that carry this information to the dorsal root ganglion. From here, it enters the dorsal column of the spinal cord, specifically the fasciculus gracilis. Note that if this were to be the upper extremity, it would go to the fasciculus cuneatus and follow the same pathway. From this point, it goes up to the brain stem the brain stem consists of the midbrain, pons, and medulla. The gracilis nucleus is present in the medulla. Note that sensation from the upper extremities will go to the cuneate nucleus. At the medulla, it undergoes decussation. This means it switches sides. Once it has decussated, it is known as the medial lemniscus. This is why this pathway is also known as dorsal column medial lemniscus pathway. From here, it goes to the thalamus. From the thalamus, it travels all the way to the postcentral gyrus of the cortex. The postcentral gyrus is the primary sensory cortex. Question number two Which part of the thalamus is involved in the dorsal column medial lemniscus pathway? Option A, VML, Option B, VPL, Option C, Medial Geniculate, Option D, Ventral Lateral Nucleus. The correct answer is VPL. VPL stands for Ventral Posterior Lateral Nucleus. It is responsible for sensing vibration, pain, pressure, temperature and proprioception. Comment below if you want me to make a video on the anatomy of the thalamus. Question number 3. The nerve fibers at part D decussate at which point in their pathway? Option A, anterior horn. Option B, medulla. Option C, anterior white commissure. Option D, Lazarus fasciculus. D represents the spinothalamic tract. It is responsible for sensing pain and temperature. Stepping on a Lego hurts, right? This is how you feel the pain. The sensory fibers enter the dorsal root ganglion. From there, they get to the spinal cord. At this point, they ascend by one or two levels in the Lazarus fasciculus. After going up, they synapse at the dorsal horn. The dorsal horn is present in the grey matter of the spinal cord. From here, they decussate via the anterior white commissure to get to the contralateral spinothalamic tract. From here, they travel up to the brain stem and go straight to the thalamus. From the thalamus, they reach the primary sensory cortex, which is the postcentral gyrus. Question number four. What is the function of the part labeled F? 
The part F is the intermediate horn. It is an important part of the sympathetic nervous system. It begins at T1 and extends all the way to L2. Question number 5. The corticospinal tract involves which of the following parts of the cortex? Option A. Precentral gyrus. Option B. Postcentral gyrus. The correct answer is precentral gyrus. We'll see how this works in a while. Before that, let's take a look at this question. Question number 6. The part C is responsible for which of the following functions? Option A. Pain and temperature sense of the trunk. Option B. Motor function of the trunk. Option C. Pain and temperature sense of the limbs. Option D. Motor function of the limbs. The correct answer is motor function of the limbs. This is the corticospinal tract. Unlike the other two that we spoke about, this pathway is descending, which means it originates from the brain and then comes down to the spinal cord. That's why it's called the corticospinal tract. Our starting point is the precentral gyrus of the brain. This is the primary motor cortex. For our convenience, let's look at two neurons. One will go to innervate the trunk while the other will go to innervate the muscles of the limbs. From here, fibers travel through the internal capsule and get to the brainstem. At the medulla, almost all the fibers undergo decussation. This is known as decussation of the pyramids. That's why the corticospinal tract is also known as the pyramidal tract. The ones that decussate at the medulla innervate the limbs, while the ones that do not decussate here innervate the trunk. Both of them descend into the spinal cord. The ones that have decussated at the medulla form the lateral corticospinal tract, while the ones that haven't decussated at the medulla form the anterior corticospinal tract. At the level of their function, the fibers of the anterior corticospinal tract undergo decussation and synapse at the anterior horn. Since the fibers of the lateral corticospinal tract have already undergone decussation, they directly synapse at the anterior horn. From the anterior horn, nerve fibers get to the muscles of the limbs and the muscles of the trunk. All the neurons from the brain to the anterior horn are upper motor neurons. The ones from the anterior horn to the muscles are the lower motor neurons. Remember the picture of our little man standing on the ground? This applies only to the dorsal column. The spinothalamic tract and the corticospinal tract have their cervical fibers medially while the sacral fibers are lateral. If you like this video and want to continue supporting my channel, please give it a thumbs up and let me know in the comments what kind of videos you wish to see. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.